every artist, writer, musician, entrepreneur, everyone who, who endeavors to reach a higher level of performance, a higher plane, athletes even, experience a force of nature called resistance. And George R. R. Martin is, in my view, in the throes of one hell of a humdinger of resistance. He And, and he's sitting there writing this solipsistic, whining article. That is resistance. Dark Days by George R. R. Martin. And of course, any follower of the Song and Ice and Fire series of books knows that uh, Mr. R. R. Martin has... You know, what is it, Gary at Nerd Roddick? He always has the exact count, how many days since the last book, you know, Winds of Winter. It's been years. It's been years and years and years. And uh, he has not released the, the next book, let alone the final book, because the next one is what? The Winds of Winter. And then the final book is supposed to be A Dream of Spring. He's not released it. He's not finished it. He's He's focused all of his time on promoting other works. And so he writes this uh, this article. Quote, in years past, <clears throat> I would often do a not a blog post on or about New Year's looking back over the year that was ending and ahead to the year to come. This year, though, as I reflected on the year we had just lived through, I found I had no appetite for living through any of that again. 2023 was a nightmare of a year for the world and the nation and for me and mine, both professionally and personally. I am very glad that it is over. 2023? How about 2020, sir? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I've never lived through a year worse than 2020. Not not any. Not any. That is the worst year I've ever experienced. I was like, that was our generation's Great Depression. And uh, we're lucky it only lasted a year because the Great Depression was like 10 years. World War II was like, for, for, the, for the world, was like seven to eight years of hell and all the anxiety building up to it. Vietnam was 10 years, 10 years of war. The American Revolution was nine years of bloody, miserable war. So, so, uh, so yeah, I'm grateful that 2020 was only one year. Well, it was almost 18 months of hell, really. But George R. R. Martin thinks 2023 was the worst year. Okay. Unfortunately, so far, 2024 looks to be even worse. It's, you know, you know, when I read this, I'm like, who'd you vote for, Martin? Who'd you vote for? How's that working out for you? I have a I have a feeling I know. I have a feeling I know. There is war everywhere. Who whose fault is that, sir? Ah. <clears throat> Ukraine and Gaza dominate the news, but there. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much I want to say here. It's like. Ukraine and Gaza dominate the news, uh, resuming with the quote. But there is a war in Myanmar as well. That, geez, you have time to worry about Myanmar? You have a lot of time on your hands, sir. As well as our Western media just ignores. Things are heating up in Yemen and the Red Sea. North Korea has nukes. And uh, it's testing missiles and rattling sabers. It wasn't testing missiles four years ago. Venezuela is threatening to annex three quarters of neighboring Guyana. Jeez, you really keep abreast of what's happening in all these. Meanwhile, the U.S. grows more polarized every day. Hate is rising. Democracy is under threat. You better believe it. Millions of Americans have swallowed the lie. Oh, oh, oh. Millions of Americans have swallowed the lie that the 2020 election was stolen. Newspeak has taken over political discourse. Cancel culture is destroying lives and careers. Whose fault is that, George? Who created that culture? It wasn't fans. It wasn't us. And we have a disgraced, indicted, venomous... Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> venomous ex-president winning primaries despite openly declaring that he will be a dictator on day one and will govern on a platform of retribution when he, oh, geez, I'm not even going to read it, when he is not busy grabbing women by the poos high. Yes, yes, indicting, indicting a running president, creating a meeting culture in which you're lying about everything, uh, that that is not the threat to democracy. His last attempt to overthrow the government failed 
on January 6th, but some of his more ardent supporters are now saying that next time they will bring more guns. Okay, we know how he voted. So, George, you voted. You voted for the current leadership. And you are also complaining about wars breaking out all over the world, about all the hate and the threats to democracy. <laughs> yeah, spare me. Just spare me. There are actually folks out there wanting a civil war. Uh, there are folks out there that want their freedom from people like you. That's what people want. It is hard to escape the feeling that we are living in the Weimar Republic. I agree with that. I am famous and I am wealthy and supposedly I have a big platform. You do, sir. <laughs> What does you do, sir? Whatever that is. But I have grown more and more cynical about this supposed power that people keep telling me I have. Has anything I've ever written here ever changed a single mind, a single vote? I see no evidence of that. The era of rational discourse seems to have ended. For that matter, the entire human race may be forgotten if, cli Jesus. <laughs> if climate change does not get us war, will too many countries have nukes? Close quote. And on, on whose watch, sir, is a nuclear arms uh, race rising? Just, just, you know. Open quote. Well, I take solace where I can. In chocolate thrones, if nowhere else. In books. In films and television shows. Which ones? Because I can't hardly find any. Though even their toxicity is growing. It used to be fun talking about our favorite books and films and having spirited debates with fans who saw things different. But somehow, in this age of social media, it is no longer enough to say, I did not like book X or film Y, and here's why. Close quote. Now, social media actually... Scratch that. Continue, quote. Now social media is ruled by anti-fans who would rather talk about the stuff they hate than the stuff they love. And they delight in dancing on the graves of anyone whose film has flopped. Uh, I certainly do, if they are arrogant and entitled and they slander their fans. And don't get me started on immigration. We are a nation of... Oh, jeez. What? Oh, God. I'm gonna. I'm going to be sick if I read much more of this. Wise straw men arguments, hyperbole, all. Resuming with the article. And don't get me started on my immigration. We are a nation of my immigrants, yet millions of us have now decided we hate immigrants. No, we haven't. That's a lie. So, so, close quote for a second. So, so, George, 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 you are saying that the, the world is, is divided. Democracy, you know, the media, the media is filled with lies, but and, and that now fans can't have civil debate. You are lying about what people actually feel. You are lying. Nobody has a problem with legal immigration. Nobody has a problem with people seeking asylum. I mean, yeah, there's probably a few, but nobody has a problem with orderly immigration into our country. What we have a problem with is millions of people whose names we don't even know <laughs> swarming into the country and, and with, with no regard for our laws, traditions, culture. Yes, societies have a right to their culture, sir. Yeah, that should be your crowd that's arguing for that. So, so who is it that's dividing people? You cannot in one hand say that there is toxicity and then in the other hand lie lie about the very people you're criticizing. Now, is it possible this is ignorance? Possibly. That's your fault, sir. That's your fault. You consume the media diet you consume, and you have swallowed the lies. Not us. We have not swallowed any lies. It's you who have swallowed lies. In fact, it is us that are vomiting back your lies at you. It is your lies that have poisoned fandom. It is every time one of these piece of crap, piles of crap, Lucasfilm project, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. You know, <laughs> Star Wars Ahsoka. Uh, the Mandalorian Season 3. And Secret Invasion. Every single time one of these pieces of crap comes out, it's badly written, it's badly edited, it's badly directed, it's badly acted, it's badly casted. Every level of it is a piece of crap. 
every level of it. And what do we have to listen to? We have to listen to you. We have to listen to the liars in the media saying that we don't like it because there's a woman in it. We don't like it because Nick Fury is black when we love that character for years of the event. We have to we have to listen to your lies, your lies. And then we have to listen to you tell us that we're being toxic when we spit those lies back at you and say, bullshit, sir. Bullshit. <laughs> Where, you know, so so who is it? Who is it that's dividing the fans? Who is it that's an anti-fan? Open quote. Now that I have made you all as depressed and angry as I am, uh, really, sir, you've just made me feel pity for you, Mr. Martin. I don't feel depressed. This is a bunch of self-indulgent, navel-gazing whining, and it doesn't make me feel depressed in the least because I know that everything you've written in this blog is based on a bunch of bullshit that you believe that's not true. So this does not depress me. It doesn't even depress me that you're so dense and uninformed. That doesn't even depress me, Mr. Martin. That's not what depresses me. In fact, in fact, I feel enlivened. I feel invigorated and inspired. I feel like there I feel like as you watch the twilight of your generation of writers, I see the dawn of a new generation who are free of the corporate union controlled propaganda mill that has literally ground all talent down to a nub. I see the death of that old dinosaur industry and the growth of freedom, the free expression of a million voices, a million Iron Age creators with new ideas, new horizons, who will finish their books, sir. That's what I see on the horizon. Listen, listen. Uh, we are not anti-fans. We are fans. We are fans. In fact, in fact, allow me, allow me to explain to you what a fan is, Mr. George R. Martin. And uh, I'm not even going to use my words. If you make a movie, especially if you make a superhero movie, it does, like you have great intentions, but there are always going to be a small yet vocal group of people there can kind of just be toxic. I understand what you're saying, but when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have and people are going to be upset because especially when it you're talking about books or games because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3 for example I don't necessarily consider that toxic I just consider that passionate mm -hmm. there you have it my dear sailors at star knots The magnificent Henry Cavill. Well said, sir. That it, That's all it is, George. That's all it is. We have always had opinions. There are things we like. There's things we don't like. And, and it doesn't matter the reasons we like it or don't like it. We have a right to have any opinion we want to have. And the strangest thing about this is you have millions, millions of readers Every author, every writer would kill to have what you have. Your, oh, I guess I have a platform, he, he groans. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you do, sir. You have millions of readers clamoring for your next book that you will not write. And you want to lecture us about anti-fans? <laughs> this is bizarre. This is bizarre. You have legions of fans desperate for your work more even more so since dan and dave the idiots that ran the game of thrones show ran your work straight into the ground if nothing else this should be a golden opportunity but as we discussed on the last episode of the captain's cast last sunday what did we talk about we talked about resistance the term coined by stephen pressfield author of the war of art in which he posits that every artist, and I agree with his thesis on this, every artist, writer, musician, entrepreneur, everyone who, who endeavors to reach a higher level of performance, a higher plane, athletes even, experience a force of nature called resistance. And George R. R. Martin is, in my view, in the throes of one hell of a humdinger of resistance. He And... and He's sitting there writing this solipsistic, whining article. That is resistance. It's, it's that challenge 
that makes life worth living and makes art worth pursuing. And when you are wealthy beyond measure, when you have millions of fans and all kinds, that is a new form of resist. A new challenger has emerged. This resistance is no longer, I can't pay my rent and I'm going to get kicked out on the street. Now resistance takes the form of, I have millions of fans begging for my work and I'm terrified I will let them down or whatever his issue is. It's probably some combination of things. He is allowing the whispers, you know, at, he's the, the whispering snake siren song of resistance to convince him the fans of the problem. And all of these Hollywood, Hollywood celebrities have done the same thing. The, the difference is if it were just whining, like Rachel Zegler, if I have to stand in this dress for six hours, I deserve to be paid. And I deserve a latte at exactly 180 degrees or I will send it back. That's just good old fashioned entitlement. And uh, you just get, you're just a laughing stock at that point. But see the the my racism and my discrimination and uh, you know my homophobia, whatever it is, that has allowed them to engage in blame culture without consequence, because they can simply blame all of their failures on a figment of their imagination, right? Oh, they, as George R. R. Martin puts it, oh, we hate immigrants. What are you talking about, you loser? I look around, I go, you could go into any store in America and you will see a cross section of the world. Even in small towns, you will see people from every corner of the world, American citizens living their lives. And all it ever makes me is happy. It makes me happy because it proves that democracy, actual democracy, and a constitutional republic is the noblest form of government ever. That is what, no thanks to you, George, we are fighting to save. Bull, say, you live in an ivory tower, George. You live in an ivory tower. The only way to beat this bullshit that your head is preventing you from writing wins and winners, the only way to beat that bullshit is to, is to get back to work. And the way you get back to work is by becoming a professional. Stop blaming your fans. Stop taking failure or success personally. Adopt a lunch pail mindset. 9 a.m. or whatever the time is, you sit down and you start writing. And by the way, I myself need to take that advice. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you loved this clip. Please like and subscribe. And did you know you can join us live every Sunday on the Captain's Cast live show? That's at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, every Sunday. You can join me and the rest of the crew in the live chat as we set sail for more amazing adventures in entertainment, film, video games, etc. And until next time, my dear sailors and starnauts, this is Captain Garrett saying I will see you out there.